Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Saturday. We are recording this on Saturday, August 17th. We have my guests that can't say no. <laughs> <laughs> Angela's so back true. with us today. It is, it is true. No, she can say no, but I may drag her into the studio. But we want to kind of get this yep. uh, thing kicked off this week, kind of keep it short. But we do want to talk about one more thing relating to leads. Uh, again, don't hang up. Stay with us. Watch the videos to the end if you're trying to help us out. But we, you know, again, this lead conversation continues to come up. I just had multiple conversations this week with agents. Steve, do you buy final expense leads or do you buy mortgage session leads? Which leads should I buy? And, you know, it comes up a lot. So I thought we would spend five to eight minutes on this video today and talk about the differences and what we prefer and why we prefer those leads. And that should wrap it up because the last week we talked about the identifiers, the age, the geographic, that type of thing. We've gone through the type of leads. We've talked about how to buy age leads, what what uh, direct mail A leads are the gold standard. I think we've gone through, the, there's probably five or six videos now on leads. If you watch the, the whole playlist, and I'll put it up right there somewhere, uh, up to my right. Is that my right or my left? I don't know, whatever. Anyway, you'll find it. It'll be in the description. <laughs> If you, if you watch that, you really, I think, Angela, I know you've watched some of these videos. You've been a part of two or three of them. I'll make one playlist just for leads because it is a conversation that comes up all the time, literally with every single agent that we bring on to our agency, certainly. And, it, you know, I think we want to exhaust the whole conversation about what type of lead to buy and why. What are the differences in the type of leads? Does age of the leads matter versus fresh leads? And what does fresh mean? Then we talked about once you get that problem solved and you get ready to buy, what should you be looking for? Because I think it's not a matter of the leads being a scam. They're not. Certainly some mailing houses take advantage of you because they are in the business of making a profit on the leads because they don't sell insurance, right? So they're, they are, their profit, profit is from the, the sale of the lead. Whereas IMOs and insurance carriers, their profit is in selling insurance. So typically the leads are generally not sold as often over and over and over again to um, various different agents. So we've gone through all of that. And then we nailed it down to, we need to, we need to look at also the geographic area that you buy in the lead and the income of that area. And then today's video, we're going to talk about, Hey, Angela, as a top producer, what leads do you buy, right? Is it final expense leads, mortgage assistance leads, and what is the reason? So I'm going to let you go ahead and take it off. Here. I've got several questions here on my notepad that will continue to keep the conversation going, but I want to get your thoughts. Welcome to back to the, to the, uh, to the channel. And as always, I appreciate you being on here because again, you're doing this day in day out every single week now for going on 10 years. So there's very few agents out there uh, that has the kind of experience that you have with working these leads and being able, having to put your credit card out for the leads. In fact, just before we came in here, I heard you say, I'm probably going to buy some leads today to get ready for my week next week coming up on Monday. So uh, again, don't hang up, stay with us, watch the videos to the end if you're trying to help us out. So Angela, welcome to the, to the channel, appreciate you. And um, I'll let you go. So I appreciate that. And that is, I mean, that's ultimately what it comes down to. I think there's a lot of agents that sometimes come in and they say, well, I wanna work this market. I wanna work final expense because I like helping people and I like working with older people. And, you know, it seems like, you know, for whatever reason. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm just going to work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And, you know, it took me a long time. I mean, it took me years to get to that point. Now it might not take other people quite that long, but for a long time, we worked Monday through Friday, Saturday mornings. And if somebody said, Hey, I, I can only, I'm only off or available on, you know, Sunday afternoon at four, then we would get in the car and go over and go meet with them. So I think you have to be a little bit more understanding of the fact that just like with any business, you're going to have a ramp up time. Otherwise, you know, if you thought you were going to get in, buy, you know, $100 worth of leads, be able to quit your job, work only three days a week for five hours a day and, 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 and be there, like, that's a lottery ticket. It's not a business, right. you know. So I have that understanding and I've always embraced that. In terms of final expense versus like mortgage protection, I have steered away from, and it's not to say I haven't tried them, but I've steered away from mortgage from from final expense specific leads, because 
you know, a lot of times in trying to generate the lead, the lead companies are going to use certain language to try and get someone to return the call or return the letter to, to respond. And unfortunately, you know, marketing companies are in the business of marketing. That's what they do. Um, and, you know, most people don't read the fine print. Most people don't read exactly the words that are in front of them. They see things like state sponsored and they and their brain interprets that to mean state approved, state paid for or state approved or state or paid free. for or state covered or free, you know. Yeah. So a lot of times my experience was. And again, things could be different, but I just don't I don't waddle into that market. But uh, a lot of times the response from people is, you know, they're looking for something very, very cheap, 10, 15, 20 dollars a month. And it's yeah. just not a market that I I play in. And they're looking for like maximum coverage and they don't necessarily, you know, um, understand that their health conditions that's the other that's the other you know issue that you have to deal with and you got to be good at it is there's a lot of health conditions the older that we get everybody yeah. Yeah. right um so you've got to be able to balance all those things and sometimes you can't do it for the for the price points people are looking yeah. for and i think what people miss is is that final expense and work session are just problems people are trying to solve right. they're not products right. nope right so uh, I mean, mortgage section typically is a term policy because you want the highest amount of coverage you can get for the least amount of money. Because generally speaking, people are buying uh, mortgage section and coverage have kids, families, or you know, the college is coming up, all that stuff. So if something happens to the major breadwinner, it's there's a major loss to the to the to the family. Um, that's the first thing. Whereas final expense is you know it, it's it's a it's a senior market. And it's usually a whole life policy because you want coverage for the whole life. So let's be let's be, let's be clear. There is no mortgage section or final expense product. It's either a whole life or a, a, a term policy. Right. Right. You know, mortgage protection is mortgage protection is like this. This is a box of tissues, right? Tissues. And there's all different types of tissues. Tissues solves a particular problem. Mortgage protection solves a particular problem. It is the problem of when I, if I pass, how is my family going to be able to, to pay off the mortgage? That's what mortgage protection means, right? Now, the way in which we solve the problem can be all kinds of different ways. So it might be with Kleenex. It might be with Puffs. It might be with a name, a generic brand. It might be with, you know, the little ones you put in your purse. So those represent really the types of insurance, term insurance, whole life insurance, universal life, uh, um, advanced markets. There's all different ways to make sure that when you die, there's enough money for your family to be covered. And it might be with term insurance. It might be with whole, insur whole life insurance. It might be with universal life. But at the end of the day, you're looking for something to wipe your nose with. It doesn't have to be Kleenex. And that's Kleenex is a specific tissue yeah. is the generic yeah yeah i thought that was pretty hey yeah, that, that was very good actually you know the other <laughs> thing is again it's a, it's a growing market in, in mortgage yep. section typically i'm just rapid fire through these things and get your comments because i'm determined to keep this video short if we can because yeah. people people generally don't wash past six minutes anyway we've already passed that mark so again it's a growing versus a dying market if i buy a mortgage section lead i know i know what and so i know they have an income generally speaking because they qualify for a mortgage Correct. Right, they generally have a house. They have yes. they, they they have money to pay the mortgage, you know. So right. they have, and they have kids and a spouse usually, not one hundred percent of the time, but more than half the time. And it's right. a growing market, meaning that I have as a as an insurance agent, I have the opportunity to not just not just make the initial sale for the mortgage section, but I got children's policies there. I've got yep. uh, I've got future plans for maybe whole life, uh, cash value, IULs, annuities. Because that family is going to grow with me as their client, uh, for and then me as their trusted advisor for a long time. Whereas right. this, the final expense market is the, again the, all the things we already talked about with regard with how the lead is marketed. It's a poor income market. It's a dying market. The likelihood of, of, of that and higher chargebacks because again the likelihood of them passing away on your watch and maybe even that in that nine minute month period of time is high. 
So those are the, right. those are the main reasons. And the reason why you buy a mortgage section lead versus a final expense lead is because you have options there in terms of future business. But more importantly, you may very well sell a final expense solution, whole life policy to a mortgage session lead candidate. Speak on that yep. for a moment. I do that a lot, actually. And I'm going to be really quick here. I do that a lot. I end up with, you know, people over the age of 65 still buy houses. And still do refinances and still, you know, uh, uh, modify their mortgage and all those different things. And so I get a lot of leads that come in that, of someone that is, you know, uh, maybe considered a senior and they have a relatively small mortgage. Maybe it's 50000 or maybe it's, um, you know, 25000 or maybe it's even something like 100000 And it's possible that they, uh, you know, they just want to make sure that their spouse has enough time to keep paying the mortgage until they can sell the house because the spouse is not going to stay in the yeah. house after they pass or they want it covered for the kids until the kids sell the house. So a whole life option may be the best route. Yeah, I keep in mind, if you if you do your research, you're going to find out that the average sale in the mortgage section market is $1,000. It's $85 a month. It's what the client pays, ten eighty five a year AP. That's the average sale and has been for 15 plus years. The average sale for a final expense uh, uh, sale, the average, whatever, I didn't say it correctly, but the average sale um, uh, for the for a final expense policy is 200. So not only that, so it's a much lower price sale. You're talking about 15 to 30 bucks a month. Would you say it's true, Angela? Somewhere in that vicinity, 30, 40 yeah, dollars a month. It's typically okay. where they're, yeah. Yeah. And so you're, it's, a, you know, it's a lower commission. The lead may cost you less, but again, you're serving a, a lower market in terms of a lower income market. And if you're doing virtual, that creates another problem. How many times do you have an issue with technology, Angela, trying to get a senior senior person yeah. to get to get their camera working, right? Oh yeah. So you have that you have that that problem going on as well, which you don't really have in the in, in the more you have you obviously have it, but not as much as you do in a in the senior market. So um, yeah, and again, the last thing I would say, and I'm gonna let you finish the call is the your you know again I, I speak about this all the time why pigeonhole yourself into a in, into one market right tell people I, well, I sell final expense look folks we are insurance agents you you i sell life insurance i sell final expense solutions i sell uh more section solutions i sell cash value college funding and debt free for accumulation the debt debt free policies i do it all right i yep. even do annuities uh, so that's what they, buy one lead and you can market many different products. Doesn't mean you don't, you, you can't dabble in it. I'm just saying when you do buy a final expense lead, you are thrusting yourself into those in, in that lower income market with the perception because of how it's marketed that as they, like Angel said, it's either free or it's very, very, very inexpensive. Yeah, and you're Nuts. you're tail you're tailoring to a market that that's what they're looking for typically. Yeah. Um. And so I think that the mortgage protection leads. Uh. And this is not to tell people not to try them. Try them. Make your own. Mix them in. You know, make your own. Right. Mix them in. Yeah. Um. But just know that your opportunities are typically more broad when with a mortgage protection solutions lead. Um, than with solely a final expense lead. Yeah, and I think that's, that, my, that, that's I, my two thoughts. I, I think what you just said there is perfect because we taught that all the time with our agents. Look, it's just a matter of you know mix in some aged leads, mix in some uh, uh, fresh, brand new right. A leads. Get five to ten brand new direct mail A leads. That's the gold standards per week. Mix in some a aged leads along with that B and C because look, there's there's diamonds in the rough sometimes, but you don't want your whole week based on finding a diamond in the rough. You want some cer certainties. Right. And, and the, in the direct mail A leads, there's a certain amount of certainties because every lead has a conversion factor and A leads convert much higher. Less leads, same same amount of sales. Right. And less time on the phone. Remember, that's, that's that we talked yeah. about in, in, in this series is that the only reason why any producer, especially a top producer, would move to a $70, $80 lead from a, from a six is because they don't want to spend the entire week on the phone trying to book appointments, chasing people to answer the phone and texting and dialing and texting and dialing and email and all, just to get somebody to answer, to, to talk to. They can buy 10, 15, 20 A leads and book their entire week up 
on a Monday morning and be done right. with the phone for the rest of the week. And all they're doing then is running their appointments. That's the attraction. And that's where you want oh, to get this, to make this business really, really easy. Yeah. Final thoughts. You close it up. Um, you know, mix in the leads, be, be like Steve said, you know, be, be an insurance agent, be, be an insurance agent. You have lots of products at your disposal, especially in today's, um, you know, market and the way that IMOs are, uh, the opportunities that they open up and be an agent, be an agent, go look for the business and all these different avenues and you'll be successful. If you pigeonhole yourself, you're just making it harder on yourself. You really are. And the frustration will, will only build. So, uh, yeah, great conversation. I have this, I think this great is a really important topic. And don't forget to market yourself. Yeah, market <laughs> I mean, yourself. Everywhere you go, people you, you, you run into is a client of yours, a potential client of yours. If you ask them, if you get involved in their lives, again, using the word form, family, occupation, recreation, and your message, if you, if you had that conversation, most people are wired to be courteous. If you want to ask about my life, I'm going to ask about your life, and you'll get the opportunity to have your five to tw- ten second, you know, uh, elevator conversation with them. And everybody needs what we had to sell. So we're all going out of the world the same way. We're going to die. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. On that positive note, we're out of here. On that happy thought, <laughs> have a great Saturday. I appreciate you being back on the call, Angie. We'll see you again on Wednesday. See ya. Bye. You look like a hoodie. I know. Well, he's he starting. <laughs>